Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Starcom Nexus. In the last episode, we pushed up in this direction and met another race, the Gortanu, who seemed to be a crab-like race of some sort. We're actually looking for the scepter of the Gorontu Hierophant or something like that for the museum. And they were very unpleased when we asked about it, as it's not something they would ever sell to us to begin with, let alone we, insult we insulted them for even inquiring about its purchase price. They seem to be servants of the Sentinels, who they call by a different name. And I don't know if we will ever see eye to eye, considering that we are killing the Sentinels because they are trying to kill us. And they are likely to join in the, in the battle at some point. But at least we are neutral with them, currently. We were unable to trade with them. We could ask about some of their rules and where this thing called Eos is located. But I have a hunch they will take insult with that as well. And it won't work out very well for us. Oh, I missed a planet out here. Hold on. Let's, let's uh, fix that. We've been killing Vendari as well out and about here, and as you saw, I think I added at the end of the last episode uh, a clip where I was just running around and destroying the fleets that were, or a fleet that was out here before I ended the episode. We lost five more people, as you can see as well, during those battles, and I will count that. Oop, it would help him. Actually, can we get there faster this way? No. I will count that towards the deaths we've had, since I was playing this game and those people died, obviously. So we're up to 105 bucks in the donation jar. I think we'll probably end with about twice that. So either 315 or 210 bucks in the donation jar by the time we're done. Hello. Really? I just lost a person immediately? <laughs> Well, especially if that happens. What the heck? That was a little freighter. What was that? Some guy must have been outside the ship cleaning it or something for us to lose a person immediately. I thought I just slaughtered the army that was out here, too, when I went to this other uh, sector. So we have some more Vendari returning. Well, let's deal with them first. Oh right, Tim, you don't have any plasma. <laughs> you have the no, you have no plasma. You can't shoot down uh, missiles. All that belongs to us, Vandari. You know, I was watching some of the videos I've uploaded for this game, and the early fighting feels quite a bit different than the later one. Early on, it's quick engagements, desperately trying to avoid enemy classifier while dealing it on back to them. And here, it it's about bringing the most guns to bear on targets when I feel it's safe to do so. Like using missiles to target certain enemies at range, then moving in to use our lasers with our Thunderbird here. But even with our other ships, it feels a bit different because we can take more hits and we have shields to let us just soak damage. Interesting. I wonder if it would... F I wonder... It no. No, no, no. It wouldn't feel any different, Tim, because the game isn't designed it, uh, to let you do something vastly different than, I think, the way we've played it. Does that make any sense, what I just said? No. I was thinking, is it possible for me to... Well, I guess it's possible for me to have gone for a larger ship class right away, but then you get blocked from upgrading it past a certain point until you have a certain research. Uh, well, researched. Oh, hello. You are a flenser or something. Interceptor? Okay, 
Okay, they're gonna fight each other. Can we get you? No, we cannot. Man, they have a good resistance to lasers, I guess. If we're this close and all five of our lasers are chewing through them. Okay, well, we missed the probe. Let's head down to the planet, though, that it was just po oh, just poking about at after we deal with this guy. Combat music still playing, but we'll just ignore it at the moment. Where is it? They're probably up at that planet guarding this whirlpool again. Oh, hello. There's an Uluku trader down here and more Vendari. Oh, they have a frigate here or something. Oh, battleships. Oh, Tim. That's a bit wrong there. We just were doing. heavily damage these ships since they uh, tend to help their friends. Oh, they killed the Uku traitor. Oh, wait. No, they, yes, they did. Those jerks. Left, huh? Die, battle cruiser. Look at all that delicious cheer light. Oh, my goodness, so much. And what on earth were they guarding out here? This looks like a black planet to me. Maybe this is uh, uh, Eos? Oh, nothing on the planet's surface, though. They were just all hanging out here for some reason. I guess, since we're just killing Vendari for, uh, Vendari for the hell of it, Let's go back up here, clear the whirlpool if there are any enemies here, and then take it up north and clear out any others that are around. We'll just sweep the area of them at the moment. And, oh, there's none actually here. Well, at least not, not at this planet. Some days, viewer, I'm just in a mood to kill the Vendari. Okay, this is that super giant, a uh, supernova, pre-supernova giant. So giant pre-super giant nova, pre-giant pre nova. It's the star that's going to go supernova soon. Hello. You picked a really wrong time to come out off that planet. You must have thought we weren't coming back. And what is Zeus? This is another freighter. Oh, wow, what the heck? We were just... Wow, we were just here. This area was clear of these host of these enemies. They're 
too close for those to hit me. You'll be next. Wow, what the heck? That one took quite a pounding. That would be a, yeah, a different frigate. Nice, but they shot accidentally on the Vendari, or they're st they still hostile with them. Your friends deal with the Sentinels. We'll deal with you, Vendari. We did lose another person. That's two so far. Man, that thing got knocked around by our missiles. Well done, Thunderbird. Combat music is still playing. I'm guessing that another fleet showed up at one of the other planets. But I think we're, I'm done. Nope, okay, it's all done, good. All right, let's go back to, actually, where am I going? That's a good question, Tim. We, I guess, we'll go back here and jump to this location at the Lunar Factory. And see about taking that delivery system and see where it, where it shoots us, assuming that it does shoot us someplace. And we'll sail past the... Uh, Lobstresses planet where they are attempting to oh Well actually first we'll just destroy these guys well, That was easy they didn't have twice the amount of ships as they normally do here. And they were nice, very close to us. Wow, look at look at all the stuff. I'm surprised there's so many of them. They come back so I like the that they come back so quickly. Since it means we can we can kill quite a f I have the excuse to slaughter them again. That sounds like someone's fighting someone else down here. A single, simple sentinel ship. That's a defender. And that's an interceptor, I think. And 
Oh. Uh, that's another Sentinel vessel. We should always fight the Sentinels on the off chance they've got flak or something. This one does not. You can only get the research from ships that actually are wielding the type of weaponry that you're looking for. Hmm. Wow, well, that was about 20 minutes of fighting to start the episode. Not bad. Five minutes to end the last one. This is fun. It's been a while since I've had just a pure combat episode. Actually, I don't think I have. We've done solely combat, and I'm hoping that we will. It will stop soon, but not right now. So those missiles are going to hit that. Oh well, some of them did actually hit the target. I don't know where this army's going of theirs, but I'm not going to let it get there. Okay, I was a bit worried about that. The moment they turn around, we'll have to actually have a problem. Oh, there's a... There's a crap load of frigates there. I guess they were joining forces to try to repulse us. Okay, let's get some distance and let our shields recover. We can deal with this single Vendari freighter as well, I suppose. Oh, hey! Leave, leave that guy alone, you jerk! Take it right there. Let's, let's get this guy with us. We use him as a shield. Oh, a little too close to hit me. The missiles, or rather, the our turn angle was was too. Oh, that's too good. That's not going to be good though. Right, we're, on, we're smoking, so we got to keep a distance for a little bit. I don't think we were able to save the Uku Trader, though, unfortunately. Man, we didn't kill him with those missiles. Looks like he should be paired just a tad. Those hit you. I believe if you completely run out of technology to offer them in Dari, this is the end result as well. Person, Tim. I'm surprised we're losing people so quickly, to be quite honest. Our whole strength was, was full. We're still losing folks. Oh, man. Wow. All right, well done. Nothing but con- oh. Wow, you're kidding me! <laughs> we- I just cleared this entire area, and they just keep coming back. Uh, maybe it would be- 
best for us to try to ignore this fleet. should take out Tim those frigates if you can. Dodge those easy enough. Just turn a little faster. Keep hitting the wrong button to cycle my weaponry at the moment. Still using the new hotkeys. Oh, we have more. Vendari that showed up. And there's a freighter among them. Let's try to get that destroyed first. My god, that thing took a pounding. There we go. Shields ran out. Let's get a little bit of distance. All of its supporting craft will be destroyed first, and then we'll go after the battle cruiser. Gonna get a chance to use missiles on me, sir. I don't think there's any like alternate endings other than how you go about solving the end of the game. So the amount of Vendari that we're killing doesn't turn the humans into like a bloodthirsty uh, conglomerate of some sort or a race. We just we're just defending we're defending ourselves. <laughs> we're the good guys. We're the good guys. We don't even want to be here. We don't even want to be here. Sounds like there's more fighting between the Sentinels and Vendari. I'm guessing. Gladly take out a Sentinel freighter. Or frigate. Because they're so annoying. Constantly asking for technology. Constantly running up to me and popping up. Popping up your, your window to ask me for more stuff. Maybe we just leave these ones alone. I, we don't need to kill another whole armada. That's good enough. Oh, hello. There's a planet out here we didn't survey. Let's fix that. How we missed so many of them in the last episode? Nothing on this planetoid. All right, well, let's set thrusters and head back up into Gort uh, Gortanu territory. Oh, I meant to take... Darn it! I meant to get take the Nexus, not jump up this way. 
Oh well, it's too late. What can we talk about, viewer? On the way up here. I'm looking down at my my paper where I've written down all the games I played this year. And we talked about the ones I played on screen. And I've got like another 50 or so. I'm like 35. That I played off screen. And I could chat about... I guess we should chat about them? Yeah, sure, why not? It's enough. And we've got a lot of exploring to still do in this game. So this is what we have a topic to do. Alright, let's go ahead and start. So... I played, during the summer, a game called Call of Corona, which is a, uh, it's, the, the story is a bit like inner space, in that you are shrunk down and injected into someone with the objective of destroying all the coronavirus that exists within the person, using your virus destroyer gun. And, uh, the intro sequence was hilarious, it was very, uh, very tongue-in-cheek, making fun of, uh... I think making fun of what the people who made the game had to work with in terms of making it look as if they were in a field hospital of some sort. I really, I really enjoyed the humor there. But the gameplay, oh man, the, the, the user interface did not over, uh, overlap with the game very well. It was like a different resolution. And I couldn't fix it. Wow, that one ran right into us. But that's when Probe didn't have anything. Uh, it was extremely aggravating. Uh, the I couldn't get the resolution in the game to change. And the FOV felt like it was... like I, my, I was looking right out of the tip of the gun. And when I would rotate around. It was too dark. I couldn't see anything. And, uh... Well, it, it wasn't very good. That said, I didn't play for very long, because I just couldn't tolerate it. <laughs> so, although the intro was very funny, I, I can't recommend Call of Corona. The uh, I wasn't even able to play the game. Oh, of course we're targeting just a frigate. And of course it's going to survive all those missiles. We want to get the... those first. Get the Bellcruiser next to him. Get this big guy next. I think that the damage you deal to the ships and how close you are to destroying them depends upon where you're blasting the ship from as well. So, if you're dealing damage to every single section of the ship because you're flying around it, it will last longer. Because I think there's, there must be like a center point or the central command st uh, structure of the ship or whatever it is, is the one you have to actually get rid of. You are a Gortanu battleship cruiser, I think. Hmm. Yep. Oh, Inquisitor is what it's called. I like the name of the. Uh, I like the name of the vessel. I played through a game called Coglomerate, or rather, didn't play through the game. I fired up a game called Coglomerate Four Five One. In my searching for other party base where I could create a party, grid based three D real time dungeon crawler games like Eye of the Beholder or what have you. Uh, this looked like there it was one of them that took place in the future, in a cyberpunk-like world, and it does. Graphically, the game looks pretty good, but the game is rather repetitious and kind of grindy. The leveling up and gear reminds me a bit of like the perks you get and the uh, or quirks. Although it looks like either be a holder or like a, a drag oh dragon warrior would be a more appropriate way to describe the gameplay there. It uh. 
It felt a bit like Darkest Dungeon as well in that regard. What's going on out here that we hear lasers? There's a Sentinel Frigate. I'm guessing that's what we're hearing firing? Alright, let's defend ourselves, and we'll see what happens with the Gortanu. Okay, they didn't go hostile. The Sentinels did open fire on us first. What? Where is that laser coming from? <laughs> what? What is doing that? They need to stop that. Okay, I said we'd take the... The cargo launcher. That's what I'm going to call it. Let's go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. An interesting sound. What's going on? What's making all those weird noises? And this looks like it's just set to launch us to the same place. Oh! That must be all the crates we see around that one planet. They've all been launched by that uh, the launcher out there. Okay, well then let's go out here and oh, we'll take We'll take the warp node. I'm guessing that warp node lock links to this one. I'm guessing it does. Okay. Anyway, uh, it was a bit too grindy for me to consider it as a game that I would want to record for the channel. After the, like, 10th or 12th battle, I realized that most enemies are the same. The tactics you use will be the same. Uh... Like, you're going to target the same types of enemies with the same skills, going to use the same skills in the same order for practically every single encounter that you have in the game. And so, uh, or at least in the area I was in for the game. So I decided that, oh, uh, it, it's probably not uh, a game for me. I really, once again, I really like the setting. Graphically, it looked great. But, uh, no. Uh, no, just too, uh, too shallow. I, I hate using such a bad word, but uh, there it is. Tim, I think we just fired on a, on a Gortanu. So now we're enemies with them, too. <laughs> I wasn't sure what that was. It looked like a sentinel ship, but I wasn't sure. Yep, the Gortanu are now hostile with us, too. Okay, uh, hmm. I didn't really want that. But it's too late. Let's go ahead and head south and just avoid fighting more of them at the moment. And we didn't really exp well we did explore a few extra extra planets extra planets more planets that we missed earlier but we didn't find anything new while we were out here we'll try to ignore you gortanu though you will have research per perhaps if we want to actually fight you so i think we'll try our best to ignore you Oh, they have swarms? What has swarms? I'm so sorry, but we need more drone control information. <laughs> we need more drone control information. So we'll quick destroy at least that vessel.
Th did I mention earlier how the humans are not a bloodthirsty race? <laughs> I might have uh, gotten a few things wrong there. Uh, okay, let's not come back to this area of space for a while. And may maybe, maybe they'll forget about this. And let's just go back to Kite Station. So we gained no research points. Because all I've been doing is just shooting down enemy vessels this entire time. Hmm. Mm-mm. Fun. A lot of fun. But doesn't really further the cause of what we're of getting us back home at all. Commodore, it goes well. We could use more crew. That's all for now. We have no more research. Oh, no, oh, right, no, we have lots of research points, but we're saving it for when we unlock one of the weapon systems that we have yet to acquire. <sighs> Alright, well, let's get out. Let's get out here. So where else should we go, then? We've cleared out this arm of the galaxy, for the most part. Let's head here and fly south through space to this nexus. Did I drift away from the thing? Oh, nope, not near the thing. Okay. Let's... You said you were going to go here, Tim. Go here. This is Arona Hell territory. Yep, there's the Aurora, there's some Aurora strikers. Sorry, check, this is a blue sun, so I'm just double checking. No, this is not. This is not the place we want to be. Sorry, this is not the place that this is this that does not have the one planet that we had seen earlier. Uh, the, wow. It is not the place we that has the planets hinted at that could have something on it from the one ship in the water that we had discovered. What of our quest? What quest is it again? Sunken ship. This is it. Blue sun planet. I see these two out here in the middle of nowhere, so we'll go to these two first. Oh, that's a blue star, too. Well, since we're heading down here first, let's visit these two uh, stars, any systems nearby. Visit this location to activate the warp nexus. And then we can come back up here and possibly go here and see if this is where that planet's located. I played Dark Souls 1 again. And I got to the very end and had a really hard time beating the final boss. <laughs> the king gives me all sorts of trouble, the uh, father of the first flame. <laughs> but it was great. Uh, I like, uh, like, off screen, no one knows, but I probably play through Dark Souls once a year now. And I like making thematic characters from other video games. So, like, I have a Hattori Hanzo from Samurai Showdown and a Namira character from the Mace uh, fighting game and so on. I like trying to design those types of characters and run through it and see how well I can do if I use weapons that they would be using. So, Hanzo was using a short sword. And I was surprised how effective it is, actually, all things considered, given that it's just a C rating weapon in terms of dex scaling. But it was still pretty good. I, I had fun r running with him. And it gave me an excuse to use Pyromancy, since he threw fire in the game, too. So, I like that sort of stuff. Really like Dark Souls, still like the first Dark Souls game. I haven't played any of the other Dark Souls games, although I think I own at least Dark Souls 2 and 3. But, uh, I've watched other people play through them, and they look like they're just Dark Souls 1, just with some of the names changed around. And I've already played Dark Souls 1, so I'm not really interested in playing the other ones. But I really like Dark Souls 1, so. If it's the only... Th it's... Now, let's stop there, because otherwise I'll start talking about it for like the next hour. Let's go ahead and search. Oh, something on this desert world? What's down there?
The source of the anomaly reading is an unusually dense meteor. Closer examination reveals small amounts of neutronium within. That must be it right here. This is kind of a new area or arm of the galaxy, so I'm curious if there's a, any other new races out here we haven't seen before. We're going to go to these two, I, I'm guessing, Earth-like worlds? Given that I see that they're green on the map. Yep. Oh, wow. These two are right next to each other. Well, I mean, there's still a thousand, uh... Oh. Hello, Uku Trader. Good to see you out here. Something on this planet's surface. Let's go down and check it out. Oh, it's a water world. Or at least we're over the ocean at the moment. That looks like really rough weather. Sensors detect an indistinct anomalous reading beneath the surface of the waves. Surface conditions on this part of the planet make for dangerous conditions. We do have dive suits. We do have the environmental research researched. So I think we go down there to at least take a peek. And pull up if it is indeed too dangerous. Send the team down in dive suits to investigate. The signal detected from orbit turns out to be nothing more mysterious than a series of underwater rock slides. Unfortunately, the team was dangerously close when one of them occurred. So what are we down to? We've lost seven crew, so that's eight so far in this episode. Oh, God! <laughs> I should write that down, by the way. Eight. It's gonna get expensive. It's gonna get very expensive. It was worth it, though. There might have been some research down there for us. I'm so sorry that person died. Ooh. Look at this place. I like the look of the ship here. On the, I'm guessing this is a riverbank of some sort. The team sets the lander down at the end of a box canyon filled with crystal clear pools and lush flora. A sinkhole at the bottom of one pool opens to a network of tunnels. The anomaly detected from orbit is luckily somewhere within. Well, oh. send a team. Oh, I wonder if this is okay. Send a team down. Send a team member down in a dive suit. The team member dons her dive suit, does a radio check, and descends down through the sinkhole. Okay, I don't think I have this around here anymore. This is a small maze, and we need to map it. To figure out where we need to go to get to the anomaly. The team member radios that she is in a maze of cave chambers with tunnels leading off in multiple directions. So, do I have a piece of graph paper? It's not that big. It's not that big. I think I have the map of it anymore, though, here. One, I'm sorry, one, give me a second or, or three. No. No. No, I don't, I don't have it. All right, so hold on a second. I mean, I can just remake it. It's not so tough. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, some rules about this, from what I remember. To get her to to get her back safely, we have to navigate her back to this spot. So we're going to investigate a few spaces and then have her return, come back up to the ship, and then try it again. And we're going to keep doing it until we can figure out where this anomaly is. So it sounds like we are in, we can go north, east, and west, but we can't go south. Okay, so there's like a wall to the south. And this will be our entry point. Actually, let's make it two. Okay, 
have them go north. The team member radios in that she is in a maze of cave chambers with tunnels leading off in multiple directions. Okay, and she can't go she can't go north anymore, so there's a wall to the north. And she can't go west either. What? South? Oh, no, she can go west. I already messed up the map. <laughs> well, just like that, that piece of graph paper is wasted. Let's see. Okay, let's try this again. So, if this is where we start, and we can't go south. We sent her north. Go west. We can only go south and east upon going west. go south right to the we can go north south or east okay so base so I can't I mean I can't show you guys the map I'm drawing to the east is where we entered let's go south again we can go north or south oops that was too big Tim shouldn't have done what you just drew it'll be okay south again North or east. Okay, let's have her come back to where we started. So go back up north. Go north again. Go east. And return. Sorry about that, but guess what? Someone else is going down there. Okay, so this time let's go east. Oh, this is a wide open area. Okay, we can go in all the directions. Go south. Go south again. If we go west twice, we will have gone as far as we had been earlier when we went north, west, south, south, south. Let's see if they connect. Go west. Oh, we can go south from here. Okay, can't go north. So, to the north is basically, on my map is like a column. And on the other side of that column is the entryway. I think we can go south, southwest, if I recall correctly. Let's see if I'm right. Go south. Oh, no, it's a dis dead end. Okay, dead end there. Okay, go north. West. North. North. East. And get on out. Someone else goes back down there. Okay, let's send them east. South. South. East. Okay, this is new now. We can go south or west. Uh, south. After what seems like ages of radio silence, she emerges from the sinkhole. They excitedly report discovering the remains of a bipedal creature in an environment suit, probably an alien explorer who became lost in an underwater maze and drowned. The unfortunate explorer's remains had been in the water too long to identify its species, but it was carrying some very interesting gear that yielded valuable data. One device, apparently a communicator, seemed to tune to the standard Starcom survey channel. Very odd. Plus 160 research points. Is that another algorithm that we needed? No. No, it is not. Can we go back down there? No, we cannot. Okay, so that was all there was. That wasn't so bad. I like little mazes like that. It reminds me of the old text adventures a long time ago, and like the Commodore. Or the old PC text adventures where you had to make a map to figure out where you needed to go. Lots of death. Lots of death happening in those old games. Uh, let's trade with the Uku while we're here. 
since we could always use more Anamantine. Actually, he's the worst person to trade for Anamantine, but maybe we have quite a bit of extra Neutronium to, to give to him. Things for things. Do you have 11? We have 121 Anamantine. Really? Oh my god. What the heck? We have 4,198 Titanium. You're kidding me. We had like only 400 or so at the end of the last episode. Did I really kill so many Vindari? Let's trade 109 gold for 11 titanium. We still need to trade some uh, titanium, uh, adamantine. We still need to give them some more. So let's give them some of that extra titanium. I guess we can learn about the death of Yggdras at this moment. When the undeep seas cooled and cleared, the first seed of the Yggdras drifted on the wind. It settled and sappled in stone when we were not yet eggs. When it was tall as the blue reef, we traded our first drop of sun. When the great war ravaged the heavens, Yggdras' tip touched the airless void for the first time, loosed her seed, and died. When the last of the Ukwo are gone, her seed will take root again. From the infernal crimson giant to the sentinel storm world, then again, you found her. That may actually be a different tree. She was here. From the Crimson Giant to the Storm World, then again, we found her. One second, one. I need to. I I want to look at that again, if I can. Uh, mission log. Crates. <laughs> Oops, it was a different, a different one. Or was it? Oh, it's what we just talked about isn't even in our log. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Oh, no, here it is. Okay. From the Infernal Crimson Giant. To the Sentinel Storm World. Then again, so that distance, the distance from the, a Crimson Giant Star to the Sentinel Storm World, and then that one more time, you found her. I think is what that means. So if I was to look at our map. It's a red giant. I would want a crimson giant. I think this is it. If if that is it, and that's down to here somewhere. Okay, I, I can do it later. Sorry, everyone. All right, let's let's move on. So let's check out the other star that's here. I 
I mean, we did get a piece of the Yadreus heartwood, so I do think that that was what we needed already, and I think that what he told us, we already knew. But maybe there's another tree. So, I can, I think off screen, I'll go and check that out. Always check the sun first, just to make sure there's nothing special about it. Nothing for that one. There's a whirlpool here, or warp node, or whatever they're called, so we'll go ahead and check that out too. Ooh, look at this toxic-like world here. Microplanet. This planetoid is far too small that it developed such a perfectly spherical shape from gravitational forces alone, let alone retain an atmosphere. It appears that a large amount of liquid neodymium combined with a fast internal spin is generating a natural compressive force field. I don't know what any of that means, but cool, we got three more research points. Let's go let's go down here and explore the next uh the next planet or planetoid. Something special on this Earth-like world. I see the forest from here. What the heck? This reminds me of Avatar. We got the floating rocks everywhere. This whole planet is covered with anomalies. Large rocks hovering gently over the seas in apparent defiance of gravity. It takes the team some time before they're able to get close enough for, to one for analysis. The rocks bob irregularly and constantly seemed about to crush the lander. As it turns out, the danger was minimal. Despite their size, the rocks are really a natural aerogel-like substance that forms as a result of chemical reactions in the planet's shallow seas. The aerial rocks, as the team geologist calls them, slowly heat and expand through the process, eventually becoming less dense than the planet's unusually thick atmosphere. Nice! Some free research points, basically. And some amazing rocks! Shame we can't tow one back with us. Probably too big for the lander. And what is this hiding out here? It looks like a desert planet of some sort. Oh, nothing on this planetoid. Nothing at all, actually. To the next Earth world. It's too close for me to talk about random, random crap. <laughs> so we'll wait until we are heading toward this other blue star. I'm guessing this this brings us down to here, I'm guessing. I'm kind of impressed with our scanner's ability to detect if there's anything unusual on the entire planet. Sorid. This is Sorid space. I think that's a Sorid ship. Unless it's a Aurora ship. Oh, Arona ship, and it is Arona ship, okay. Right. Sorids are a bit more tubular. But thankfully, we're peaceful with the Arona, so we don't need to worry about Hostiles from them. I was really happy with myself when I was able to do that quest. Though, uh, to find their home world. Though, I did need a little help from the internet to do that. Oh, can we get you? We're getting you. Darn it. Nothing. I think the vast, vast majority of those we have cleaned up by now. Of any potential research points that they might have. I kind of wish I could not. Un I could untarget a ship after I target it because I don't want to accidentally shoot it. Something on the desert world. Let's head down there and take a peek at it. This planet has dozens of glowing craters belching toxic gases. 
Scans reveal that they are not volcanic activity, but natural fission reactors. The unusually dense rock focuses the released neutrons in certain areas, producing great quantities of heat and moderate amounts of cobalt-60. Plus 10. You know, it occurred to me, with all the fighting that we did, that kind of does take away from the sense of not having enough resources, if we can just obliterate the entire Vendari race to get them. So maybe we should do a little less fighting of, from them. But I'm still not giving them anything. But I won't go out of my way to slaughter them any longer. We'll maybe clear an area if we have to reach something that they're guarding, but otherwise we'll just ignore them. I like the look of this UFO-like structure out here. In a dry canyon, thermal erosion has exposed a large artificial structure, either a base or vessel of some kind. Inside, the team finds that most of the equipment was removed long ago, possibly prior to the structure being abandoned. The interior is one of remarkable feature, the walls are almost entirely covered with beautiful fractal-like graffiti. The team's xenoculture expert speculates that it might have been part of some ritual, if the structure had spiritual significance. I think we can come back here later. Yes, yep. Uh, or maybe, can we go back down there again and take a second peek before we leave? Okay. We will find a little more information about that, because I think we'll find it in another place as well in the future. And then, from there, we can come back here and maybe make sense of it. Let's go turn on the warp nexus here. If it is off. It was. Okay. Activated. Oh, so we had... Dude, no, I think we are. I think we can jump to them even if they're unactivated, and then they'll activate afterwards unless it requires the pillars to turn them on. We'll go ahead and head on over to that blue star and double and check to see if it is the star we're looking for. And then we'll wrap up the, wrap up the session. Sentinel ships. Cutter. Cutters, interceptor. They don't have flak on them. And Vendari. I can I'll just ignore the Vendari. Let's head out here. And just ignore those enemies. does give me an excuse to look very quickly. Right. I think there was a message here which asked not to dismantle that station. That sound is me accidentally left-clicking, guys. Sorry about that. All right, so I tried getting Lum to work this year. Lum is a mod I made. L-U-M-N. For Darkest Dungeon called Lotteries Uncleverly... Actually, no, sorry. L-U-N-M. Lotteries Uncleverly Named Mod. And it rebalances Darkest Dungeon to make it more of what I was hoping it would be. Man, it's been a long time since, since I have uh, modded Darkest Dungeon or worked on that mod. A very long time now. Three or four years? Darn it! There's a ship out here and we can't do, we can't shoot anything down from it. Uh, oh, that's promising! Blue Desert. Baron, if that's a water world, that could, this could be, we need a purple, a giant purple gas, uh, no, this is not it. I see two desert worlds here. What the heck is that? Chitek! 
Oh my god, what the heck? We haven't seen Chitek in a long time. I wonder if they're any stronger now that we've increased the difficulty a bit. Well, let's wipe them out. Scan the plants that they're, that they're guarding. Oh, I think there's a base down there or a battleship. It's about battle, it's a battle cruiser. Oh, your their missiles tickle. <laughs> it has been so long since we fought them. They haven't really improved their technology at all, I see. The brief from that ship reveals that Chitek use Chirolit reactors like we do, but with a secondary pass for greater energy output at the expense of shorter reactor life. 45 research points back when we were looking for it, like even 50 would give, give, get us an upgrade. Now we need hundreds of research points for such. Oh, there's a base! Or sup? Uh, there's a drone. There's more drones out here at least. We can get what we need from drones, but they still killed one of us. Unbelievable. This is the last piece of the puzzle. We should be able to research the construction of autonomous drone launchers. Nice. Combat music is still playing. Let's make sure... Oh, guys, uh, hold on. It's getting a little choppy, so I've been playing for about an hour or over it. Oh, all right. Looks like it's fine now. Let's wipe out everything we see out here. That's hostile to us. Assuming these aren't, like, Gortanu. Doubt there's more of these guys. So much fun to sit here and just pummel the poor chit deck. <laughs> they can't eat, they can't touch us as long as my sh our shields are up. Shame you guys don't have flat cannons. It would be nice to be able to unlock those too. Alright guys, the game is getting a little choppy. I'll be right back. Actually, I can't, I can't save it as long as there's hostiles close by. Can I save it here? Oh yes, okay. I'll be right back guys. Okay, back. Let's go ahead and wipe out the rest of the chit deck. So, recently, some games have been giving me trouble with my recording software. I use Fraps. And, uh, Fraps... Fraps, uh, does not like, uh, games that use certain engines. And that after a little bit of time has elapsed, Fraps will begin having uh, hiccups, shall we say. Games will occasionally start stuttering. Uh, if I haven't, like, the longer I play them, the more likely it will occur. Until about, after about, like, 56 minutes or so, to about 115. 115? That's about right. Hour and a half or so. Uh, it will begin stuttering, and I have to quit the game and then relaunch it again. Nothing on that desert world. This, I don't think, is the proper place. I don't think this is it. Anyway, that will give us drone technology. So we'll double back. We'll end the episode doubling back and unlocking it and taking a few points in it with uh, via research that we've been saving up. It's a very pretty world, this one. Looks like a gumball. Where Chitek just warped in. We'll get rid of them, too.
It's another swarm probe that seems to have crash-landed on this icy planet. The durable little probe's memory banks contain a wealth of information from its travels. If this is really part of a large swarm of explorer probes, its makers must be sitting on a wealth of knowledge by now. They're constantly going out looking for more things. I don't know if I discovered what is launching them. I didn't explore every single thing in this game when I ended it the first time through. More drones. Remember, I don't know if you, I don't know if I, if, if I told you guys, but drones ignore shields. While we're here, we'll check out this blasted planet. Wow, look at this planetoid. It's seen better days, that's for sure. And what days it's seen will be unknown to us, because there's no anomalies down there. I really like the battle cruiser's use of drone technology. I don't remember the Chitek using it before. I wonder if it's because of the increased difficulty level I have it on. At this point in the game, they're still not very dangerous. They would need like five times the number of ships to uh, give me some trouble. I should get rid of that, whatever that is. Oh my god, and more, just keep warping in. Please, Gabe, I wanna, I wanna mind the tournament get out of here. But I can't, because the OCD in me compels me to wipe out every single, every single one of these shit tech I see. Because I, I need those two titanium and two yidium that we're getting for some reason. We don't really need it. Uh, sure, well, I mean, we'll mine this. More Chitek just warped in. And more. And more. Okay, whatever. They can just stay here. We're, we're done. We're leaving. We, oh, no, we're not. We want to explore that planet. Nothing. All right, Chitek, you can stay out here now. We don't need to bother you anymore. I will want to come back out here to blow up all the pieces of the derelict because there could be unique research from it and or some like uh, adamantine from the scraps, but we'll do that later. I'll, I'll probably do it off screen. Right now, let's head back over here and take that warp node back to a warp nexus, and we'll take that back to Kite Station. In the meantime, yeah, so Lum was for Darkest Dungeon. I was intending to sneak in Darkest Dungeon with the Lum mod this Halloween, but I had all sorts of problems getting it to work with the new Darkest Dungeon files, and after about six hours of wrestling with it, I just gave up. Uh... I don't need to play Darkest Dungeon anymore. And, uh... I guess... Well, I'm talking about if I like games or not. I've never been a big fan of the original unmodded Darkest Dungeon. I felt that it was not very well balanced. A bit too easy. And some of the mechanics in the game were created to stop the player from taking advantage of other mechanics in the game which were created to stop the player from taking advantage of other mechanics in the game, which and so on and so forth. 
there was uh, a lot of work of rebalancing, but some of the skills just weren't very useful. Wow, this frigate, holy crap, it took a, that took a pounding. We'll try to save you, Uku. I don't want the Sentinels to... Oh, God! It hurt too much of you to miss a lot of laser fire. We'll be okay. Those are Vendari over there. We've already explored the station. Let's get out of here. I want the warp portal. Please, please, Vidari. I want to leave, but I can't because now you're fired missiles at me. And I hate having missiles fired at me. No one tends to like having missiles fired at them. That must be a sentinel ship of some sort. Because it's the missiles are snaking a bit. It's a defender. Uh, we'll destroy this battle cruiser of the Vendari. No, I think the Uku taking takes taking hits. Defenders do not have flak, so we can't get that information from them. If the Sentinels are firing on the Uku, and they are, uh, that that guy's dead. Sorry, Uku. You might have some information, though. Some research that... Because I'm not going to destroy you otherwise. You can get... So if an enemy... If the races are fighting each other, you can still... They might drop technology that you can use. Since it's just a random drop from the ships being destroyed... More ships have warped over there, but we don't care. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Yeah, so I've, I've never liked the basic Darkest Dungeon and since the beta when I was last up. Uh, what was the last time I played through it? Uh, I felt it was... Uh, I already have said some, some things, and I don't want to give a review for it. I'll just say that without modifications, I don't like Darkest Dungeon much. Riker, I can't risk shooting you. Oh, that's interesting. The Strikers have warp technology. Uh, they, they have hopper technology, because I just saw one of them use it. I didn't realize that, that a different enemy would have them. A different enemy? A, 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 a race that wasn't you would be able to use that tech. How about that? Yeah, so... uh. It was a fun game when I played it many years ago, I suppose, though. But I don't I don't like Darkest Dungeon a whole lot anymore these days. I won't play it without my mod, and if I can't get my mod working properly with it, it's not a game for me. Man, this is going to sound awful, but no, I I wouldn't give Darkest Dungeon even one thumbs up. I think it's a bit I hate to say it, I think it's a bit overrated. But not every game is for every person. So just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's just not for me any longer. I've heard there's another one that's out 
but I've heard they've changed it a bit from the original formula, which is good, I think, since I like when devs try new things. But I think they've made it a bit more like Slay the Spire, with you go to different places, you do like a battle or two at a location, and then you move on to a new location, and you get to choose what path you want to take your wagon through or something of the sort? I don't know. But I'm, I don't intend to play it, because they release it on the Epic Store as like an exclusive, and I have a thing against the Epic Store, so... Anyway, I'm getting uh, too involved in the weeds of a game I'm not going to play anymore, so let's just not talk about that again. <laughs> right, we're back! Let's get some more uh, crew. We have ten who died in this episode. How's morale? Not too bad. Good. Okay. Uh, let's go to our research. 1,500 points to place. Why don't we take... Oh, did we not take... Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I don't care about that. Sorry about that. I saw a research I hadn't seen before. We want to look at drone technology. So that, where is that going to be? Oh, I, do, I don't know where it is. Okay, that's a bit awkward. Energy scans. Armor construction. Do we have to talk with someone about it? Not Pillman. Not the engineer. Nothing we need uh, for morale. Oh, we can. Can we just build it? No, we have to research it first. Oh, is it like a special research? No, it's not. Okay, hold on a second. I've. Sometimes I I can't. It's probably right in front of me, and I don't know where it's located. Oh, there it is, right here. So you have to have a galaxy class ship to be able to put a drones on it. Okay. Oh yeah yeah yep. And we have up the behemoth. All right, let's go ahead and research it. Allows the construction of attack drone launchers. Attack drones are created from titanium supply. And of course, we'll grab the first rank of upgrades, because I like doing that. So we'll extend the maximum flight time of drones by 50% with drone fuel reserves. Armored drones. Increase drones health by 50%. Expanded hangars. Increases the maximum number of drones per module by one. Micro Impulse increases the speed of our drones. Advanced Fabrication accelerates the production of drones from raw titanium. Nice! The first tier of all those upgrades have been researched. I can't build my Protoss carrier. Because I need the Havoc Defense Systems, which are the flak cannons or countermeasures I keep talking about. And we need 612 Platinum as well. Holy crap. All right, we got to do some trading, apparently. Interesting. I thought we had everything that we needed. Okay. I don't know if I want to try the Guardian Class Cruiser, because we're going to lose lots of people with this. It's also before I went heavy into shield technology, and it's a little slower than our current vessel is. I think I'm going to scrap this and make a new vessel. Okay, everyone, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to thank you guys for watching. When I come back, I will have designed a new ship, and we'll try out our drone launchers there. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching, everyone. And take care.